My name's Ed Parsons, and I'm Google's geospatial technologist. I think that the, the principle, the, the concept behind spatial data infrastructures is a good one. And clearly, no one would argue that sharing geospatial information uh, with a broad, the broadest community possible is a good idea. I think part of the problem is historic, and that SDIs have largely been developed by traditional data publishers, mapping agencies, cadastral agencies, who are used to serving a, a professional market in a particular way. And I think as a result of that, the, you know, the SDIs that you see around the world at you know, local, regional, national, even at a global scale, have developed on technology platforms that are quite specialized and just do geospatial. And as a result of that, I think they've missed many of the opportunities that the, the broader web, which is more standardized, more widely used, bring. And, and as a result of that, I think often the content that is published by SDIs remains invisible to the broader community of web users. I think usability on the web ultimately comes down to a question of accessibility. How accessible can you make your information? And there's a, there's a technology element to that, and that's about being a good web citizen, making sure that you publish your content on the web that's accessible just via a web browser to a particular URL or URI. And then obviously the, the, the policy issues as well, and that's more towards open data uh, policies, making sure licensing is, is broad and easily accessible. And on both of those aspects, I think you know, SDIs have gone quite a long way, but it's 80% you know, of the job done. There's another 20% that is about making you know, the data web accessible, being good web citizens. And I think there's still probably some work to do around licensing with the recognition that the end users aren't necessarily going to be someone that you know. Uh, you know, a lot of the, the success of you know, the modern app market is built on APIs and um, uh, programming platforms where a developer has quite a loose connection to the platform uh, developer. So the developer you know, may not be aware of who's building applications and what the uh, end user of those applications are doing. And I think that's something that many sort of traditional mapping agencies and government agencies are uh, uncertain about. You know, they want to know who their end user is and sometimes you know, for very valid reasons. But that's kind of counter to the way that apps are, are developed these days. In, security is a complex issue and you know, I'm not really going to talk specifically about Google but, but you know, technology on the web is about you, know, you choosing to share information with who you want to share it with and not sharing it with anyone else. And that, I think, nowadays means that most of the services that you will use, data will be encrypted when it's at rest, as we say, i.e. it's on a server somewhere, and it will be encrypted in transit. So it's when it's moving from one server to another server, it will be encrypted. And, and modern encryption is very, very strong. It's, it's you know, almost impossible to break you know, modern encryption uh, that's that's widely used uh, in any sort of reasonable period of time. So, you know, if the data is encrypted and the organization that's hosting your data is doing a good job, you should be reasonably sure that your data is secure. But I think, you know, in, in terms of SDI, there's a lot of, you know, maybe to the fundamental questions that people need to answer is, do I really want to share my data? And by share, it actually does mean it's available to anyone and for anyone then to reuse it, remix it, combine it with something else. Uh, because you know, once your data is out on the internet, you're sharing it, it's a bit like mercury. It will, it will flow in whichever direction it chooses, chooses to flow and once it's out there you can't really stop that. Um, so it's a case of I've chosen to share that data, it will be shared. If I choose not to share data, it's encrypted, no one really gets access to it. I think, you know, in, in many ways you could argue that the consumer market is trying to do simpler things. You know, in, in many cases the data that traditional SDIs are dealing with is much more complicated, you know, much richer data models and so on. But I think what we can take from the consumer market is, is a very strong focus on the user. 
you know, we're very focused on what are the actual user needs for a particular application? How do we measure those? How do we see how well we are meeting those needs? How can we monitor if those needs are changing? And I think those people that are developing apps today, be it on the web or in mobile devices, have that very strong focus. You know, you see releases of, of you know, uh, mapping apps on mobile phones happening you know, every two or three weeks or every month with development changes. And most of those developments and changes are based on that feedback of monitoring how people are using the application, what's working, what's not working. That, that user focus, I think, is really powerful, really valuable. And it's something that you know, developers of you know, SDIs focused maybe at more government users could take on board. Yes, yeah, so, I mean the business model question is an easy one, an uh, interesting one. I mean, you know, it's everyone has constraints. You know, even large commercial companies have to pick and choose how they invest their time and their capital in building, you know, new services and new applications. There is probably more flexibility if you have a community of users that's, you know, paying license fees or you're supporting uh, your services by advertising, you know, which is which is what Google does. So perhaps there's a bit more flexibility there. But I think you know there's there's a more fundamental question, which is, you know, what do we expect an infrastructure to provide? And I think often we throw too much functionality, too much complexity into an infrastructure. Uh, you know, in, in my talk, I, I think you might have maybe someone asked a question about, you know, the balance between, you know, what uh, goes into the infrastructure and what goes into the applications that sit above that. And if you look at, you know, the, the really popular apps on your mobile phone, you know, the Google Maps, the Facebook, the Instagram, you know, there are applications that sit on top of a relatively basic internet infrastructure. So behind all of those apps, there are web servers and traffic that's moving over HTTP. You don't see that, that's invisible to you, and compared to the complexity of the application, that, that traffic is quite simple. Perhaps in SDI terms, we've, we've thrown too much into the infrastructure. We can maybe back off a little bit and say this is at a very simple level just about you know, sharing data on a website somewhere and we allow more of the complexity to happen in the applications, which are by their nature more focused on vertical markets or particular, particular user needs. I think so, and, and you know, certainly WebGIS has solved problems, you know, solved big, big issues in terms of, of publishing data. And in some ways, maybe you could think of you know, WebGIS as the obvious application that sits on top of an SDI. Um, don't bring web mapping into the SDI itself, it's something that sits on top of an SDI. Um, and the SDI is much more at that very basic level of saying, at this particular URI, you will always find information about this particular LAN parcel. And that means that that data is always accessible to people, it's consistently accessible, and then it's in a format that an application developer, another agency can build on top of with that reassurance that the underlying infrastructure is not going to change. I think, first of all, be good web citizens. And as I said, that's about publishing all your content by default on the web using as simple tools as possible, you know, using HTML, using you know, SVG, using the languages that the rest of the, the web use. Invest in looking at the emerging fields of the semantic, the semantic web and linked data. Because above and beyond publishing your data, the next step is to publish your data in a, in a semantically rich way that it makes it easier for people then to build applications. So that you know, if you talk about a highway and someone else talks about a motorway, we know we're talking about the same thing. That's the next step. And I think the third step is, is to build an ecosystem that, that then works, support that ecosystem. Say, so, you know, I've, I've built my infrastructure, but people won't necessarily come and use it unless I advertise, I support, I market what I've built. Uh, you know, there's the, you know the, the famous film quote that if you build it, they will come. Well, actually, that doesn't work. If you build it, nobody comes unless you tell them. So, you know, you be a good web citizen, invest, look at the semantic web, and then foster that ecosystem around the, the infrastructure that you've built. But I think geoportals are great, and they meet the needs of a particular community of users. 
but reality is if you really want to meet the needs of some specialist vertical markets or particular user communities most government agencies indeed many commercial organizations don't have the bandwidth and don't have the expertise those people that are smart build an infrastructure that allows an ecosystem to exist around it and allows application developers to you know, go down a particular route, plug into that infrastructure and build an application that's very focused on particular user needs or particular market requirements.